Apparently I need to add my video to the stream. That's really beneficial, I guess. You know, life learning lessons, all that fun stuff. I'm gonna wait a second, see some people roll on in. When you get here, if you wanna say hi, please do. Give me a little shout out. Let me know who you are, where you're coming from. I um. I usually do this medicine making Mondays on, you know, Monday. Uh, but I was dealing with a major, major desire for a backyotomy yesterday, like super, super bad, low back pain. And I'm dealing with it a little bit today, but I've definitely helped out a bit. So I figured why not do a talk about how to make your own pain relieving salves. So as we go through this, I'm not gonna give you your own recipe, but I am going to give you the tools and the tricks you need to make your own recipe. So that will be lots of fun, I hope for you, because then you can get creative and have a good time and, and that kind of fun stuff. So give me one second. My niece is trying to call in on my phone and I'm on Instagram too. Um, and I'm gonna tell her not to do that. Hello. Hey Lou, you can't call right now, please. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> she just kept doing it, so sorry about that. Um, let me get back to where I was on the Instagram thing. Sorry, everybody on Facebook and YouTube. I promise I'm gonna get this together. Sweet, awesome. Hey, Candy. I'm glad you are here. And so, as I was saying, back pain, it's a bummer. So is overall body pain. And yesterday, actually for, for like three days straight, I was dealing with it. And so I figured it would be a good idea to teach you guys how you can create your own pain relieving salves. Like, sure, I make one, that's cool, but you can make your own too, and it's not that hard. So I figure what I'll do is I'll first start about so talking about some of the ingredients you could add to your own salve. Then we'll get into like ratios you can play with and some other tips and tricks and tools of the trade to make you your own medicine maker, if you're cool with that. Um, a little sip of herbal tea. I'm drinking my digesties today, mainly because it's delicious, not because I need it in particular, but the minty freshness is really, really nice right now. So let's get into some herbs that can do amazing things for you and your body when it comes to pain relief in a topical fashion, shall we? Uh, one of those I like a lot is ginger. And I like to use ginger topically because it's very, very warming and having that warmth is gonna promote the flow of blood to painful areas, which is gonna help alleviate a lot of the inflammation as well and a lot of the pain. So ginger is really nice in that realm. I also love to use cayenne. And cayenne's really great for a lot of the same reasons that ginger is. It's also fantastic because it opens up your capillaries and that's going to make it so that the rest of the herbs and other medicinal constituents I'm gonna talk about can get targeted and into your bloodstream right at the source where you really need that pain relief. So that's super cool. So cayenne does open up your capillaries. It brings all of the other medicine into the body and it is very warming um, and definitely helps to alleviate a lot of the pain that may be going on. Right now I'm hanging out um, with a nice heating pad and I have some salve on the back too. Cooling and warming salve. Um, Another great herb that you could bring into your own salve, hey Virginia, so glad you're here, um, would be comfrey. And if you haven't had a, heard of comfrey yet, it's great because it grows so easily everywhere. I really love comfrey in a salve, particularly for pain relieving issues because it's really fantastic for alleviating bruising. Um, and it's great to speed the healing process of broken bones, sprains, pains, and other um, really challenging things like that. So comfrey can be a fantastic addition to your pain relieving salve. Um, 
Another one I love a lot to use is going to be St. John's wort. And I know maybe you've heard about using St. John's wort for things like it's it's been an herb and um it's unfortunate because it's so much more than that and it's very specific for certain types of depression so it's it's not like ooh, i'm gonna go take saint john's wort and suddenly i'm gonna be consistent consistently happy as can be it's a much deeper process than that so but we're talking about pain relieving salves and saint john's wort is really fantastic for helping to alleviate nerve pain topically. So if you're somebody who's dealing with sciatic nerve pain, which could be pain for the lower back and all the way down the legs, St. John's work could be a really, really beneficial friend for you to have on board there as well. At Virginia, I do have a pain relieving salve that I sell. It's called Bobcat Balm and it's the bomb. It's really, really amazing. Um, and actually a lot of the ingredients I'm talking about today go into the Bobcat Balm. So, you know, Maybe you learn to make your own. Maybe you buy mine. I'm totally cool with either one. It's pretty empowering to make your own. Sometimes you make your own and then you're like, oh man, this isn't my specialty. <laughs> and you realize that you got to do something different. For some reason, my live just kicked me off of Instagram. Give me one quick second. I'm going to see if I can fix that. Um, my phone is mad at me, and I think it's because I let my seven-year-old use it for the last few hours. Give me one second. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm going to talk about herbs. I'm going to talk about pain-relieving salves. I promise. Um, let's see what happens here. Try it again. Sorry for those that I kicked off over there, and maybe they can find me um back here again who knows technology is so fun in that way um oh good virginia you do have bobcat balm i thought you might have that already so um and yeah the essential salve i think is appropriately named because i have heard so many things that people have used it for it's amazing. And Hillary, yay. Um, Hillary just got a version of my Bobcat balm that I make that's not on the internet yet. It's a hemp cup and it's a lot of the herbs and things we're going to be talking about today with a full spectrum hemp as well. So um, it's pretty pretty jam-tastic. I think I allow myself, I get so excited about your comments in, in all of these as this comes together that I'm like, oh, let me have a conversation with you. So Pardon me as I teach and conversate with you. Maybe one day I'll learn that talking and conversation comes later. You teach while you're live, but that takes away a lot of the fun for me. So um, cool. So we've talked about ginger, right? Ginger's nice and warming. It's going to promote circulation to the area. It's going to help alleviate pain topically. We um, have talked about cayenne which is really amazing because it opens up your capillaries so that the rest of the herbs and medicinal constituents can get exactly to where they need to be. We've talked about comfrey, which is one of the most amazing herbs to use when it comes to healing and speeding the healing of sprains and strains and bruising as well. Um, we've talked about St. John's wort, which is very, very specific for dealing with nerve pain topically, which can be such a great friend, especially if you deal with sciatica and things like that. Uh, Virginia, to get the hemp cat balm, you just have to message me and then we do a PayPal thing. I just haven't gone through the logistics stuff of um, Shopify. It's a whole nother website that I basically have to build and not the top of my priority list at this moment, but man, oh man, once I do, I'm going to have some pretty incredible formulas. I'm going to do some sleep tinctures. I'm going to do some other um, really amazing things. So that'll be fun when I get there. I am very, um, very prone to trying to do too many things all at once because I have so much fun formulating. I have so much fun teaching. I have I love doing these things and that's really my goal is to get to the point where all I'm doing is teaching and formulating really great products for you guys. But turns out there's a lot more to deal with as well. So 20 steps is a time is all I can handle. Those will be on a website soon, hopefully before the end of the year. Um, another great herb. Oh, about St. John's wort. So 
actually, I'm going to save this for a moment when I talk about how you're going to infuse your oils to get the medicine into your oils to then get it into the salve, which we are absolutely going to get to. So another herb that I really love to put into my salves for pain relief is um, Arnica. Arnica is truly amazing. Um, I like to use fresh Arnica. It is a flower that is in the Asteraceae family, which is the same family as the dandelion family. Um, and um, it's amazing. So I like to do it when it's fresh because if it gets dried, it's like a dandelion poof, essentially. So if you think about how this beautiful yellow flower originally is, and then it turns into this puffy thing, you think about that, how much medicine must be in that bright, vibrant yellow part of the flower, right? And that is why I like to infuse that oil while it's fresh, which is a whole nother ball game than what I'm going to talk about here. I'm gonna teach you how to infuse your oils while you're using dry oils, particularly because it's snowing right now. So there's not a lot of fresh herbs at your ready right now. So as we go along, I mentioned this in the beginning, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can create and formulate your own pain salve. So I'm not gonna give you a specific recipe, but I am gonna give you enough tips and tricks and ratios and guidelines that you can sit and you can you might wanna take notes um, and then you can create your own however you need, whatever fits for you. Because Candy has said that she's tried a hemp muscle rub and it made her skin all red and itchy. Maybe she's allergic, which very well could be the case that there's an ingredient in there that does not agree with your body. Um, you know, things like cayenne can still make your skin red because it's promoting all of that circulation and the blood flow there, which is gonna create some redness. Um, that can be okay. And if it made it itchy, I would think that maybe it's not okay. I would look into what else was inside of that salve. Candy, if you've used my Bobcat Balm and not had that same result, I'd be really interested to figure out what else might be going on there. We can maybe chat about that another time. So those are some of the herbs you can put into your salve. And the best thing for you to do with those herbs is to make them into an oil. So you're going to take about one ounce um, of the dried herb and you're going to put that into about one cup of a carrier oil. For carrier oils, you can use something as simple as olive oil. You can use coconut oil. Sunflower oil has a lot of vitamin E in it for the skin. Um, sesame oil. There's a whole host of ways you can go. One thing to think about though, like if it's, you can't really squeeze oil from a corn corn kernel. So maybe avoid those kinds of things. Think about oils and, and good oils are things that you could actually like imagine squeezing the oil from it. Um, it's a good way to think about that. So yeah, you will just take that dried herb, the one ounce of the dried herb, and approximately one cup of your carrier oil, and you will put them together. Um, and you can, the more you powder down the herb, the better off you're going to be. I do want to caution you when you're using powdered herbs, make sure that they're not very old because as you powder them, it's creating more space to be absorbed into the carrier and the medicine, but it's also creating more space for that medicinal value to be deteriorated the, the longer it sits. So if you've got some fresh powder, you're, you're golden. I'm not going to make you worry about that so much but if you've got you know some cayenne powder that's been sitting in your cupboard for five years unused it may have lost some of its medicinal potency um, so think about that um, and it is nice to break down if you're coming at it with more whole herbs to break those down a bit just so that more of that surface area of the medicinal plant is getting able to be absorbed into the carrier oil so once you've got that carrier oil you can do a few different things one thing I love to do is to put it into a water bath in a crock pot. And that allows me to keep the temperature between 
100 and 110 degrees because I use a little dimmer switch that I buy at the local hardware store. It's a dimmer switch you would plug any lamp into from your home and it will allow you to help change the temperature of the water in your water bath. So it's a super sneaky little trick that not a lot of people know and you get to know by being here and hanging out with me. Um, so the water bath trip, in the crock pot. Ideally, you don't want your herbs and oil to get much above 110 degrees. 140, like super tops, I've heard a few medicine makers say, but then you're cooking the herb and the oil, and that's not what you want to do. You want to gently infuse. So I love the crock pot and the water bath idea in a crock pot. So it would be the herb and the oil in a jar in water with the temperature gauge inside of your crock pot in the water of the crock pot that tells you your temperature. Just a candy thermometer is absolutely fine. And then you can spend about 10 bucks at your local hardware store and you can get this dimmer switch. And then you mark on your dimmer switch where it says like, oh, cool, I'm at 103 degrees. That's primo. That is great for infusing your oils. Um, with cayenne and ginger and really well powdered herbs, you can totally like put them together, shake them on the daily and let them sit and infuse. Um, actually, when I'm making my bobcat balm, I don't even strain out my cayenne oil because it gets really sludgy and stuck on the bottom if it's not shaken every day. And I just use it that way, which is totally, totally fine. Um, yeah, so that's infusing the oils. You can also add essential oils to your blends and some essential oils that I think are really fantastic for helping to relieve pain would be um, peppermint. Peppermint's cool because it creates both hot and cold sensations for your body, which can be really, really nice. The heat's gonna help bring about blood flow to the area, which is gonna alleviate pain and inflammation um, and promote a little bit more flexibility in the body. The cold can help provide a little bit of numbness around the joints. It's going to reduce the pain. It's going to ease the inflammation because inflammation is hot. Cold is cool, you know. Um, and it's also going to help with muscle spasms, the peppermint and the cooling. And if you think about it, like when they tell you like heat and ice, heat and ice, heat and ice, these warming herbs with some cooling things like the peppermint, or you could even use menthol, which is derivative of um, mint also could be really, really nice. Another great one, essential oil specific for salves for pain relief would be black pepper. Again, it's going to be excellent for muscle and joint pain. It is very warming and it does a fantastic job of promoting circulation to the area. You may want to be careful with this one too because um, it can cause sensitive skin issues. So that's something you might be aware of their candy. Um, and you'll also want to avoid the black pepper essential oil during pregnancy because it, of those skin sensitivities can be heightened during that time. Um, black pepper, pepper essential oil is an analgesic, so it is specific for pain relief. Um, and it's also antispasmodic, so it'll help with muscle spasms if that is an issue. Um, you could think of adding eucalyptus, which is gonna provide more of that cooling and inflammation easing property to it. Super duper nice. Um, I use ginger essential oil in my bobcat balm. It's really nice. It's also just perfect and ideal for sore muscles and joint pain. It is also an analgesic, so a pain reliever. It is also antispasmodic, so it's gonna alleviate those sore muscles or the muscle spasms. And it's another one, it is hot. So it can cause a lot of sensitivity for your skin and things like that. So be careful and be careful as always using essential oils um, and making your own medicine. It's great that Candy was really aware that she got red and rashy after applying something specific. Pay attention to that, that your body's saying, hey, yo, I don't like this. Um, it's not for me. And, and that's totally, totally fine. Um, yeah, so with the essential oils, you'll want to do those at about three to five percent 
This is something you'll want to write down. Three to five percent of your whole formula. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later because it's when math gets to come into the game and it gets kind of confusing. And I remember when I first started making my own salves in my home and I did it um, like an ounce of this, a cup of this, a gram of this, like all these different types of measurements and it got really confusing. And finally, because I, I make them on a professional level and on a large scale, I had to like finally <laughs> get really cozy with the metric system and break it all down to grams and milliliters for everything that I dealt with. So it sometimes get a little, gets a little confusing, but I'll work in percentages and then you can play with it from there on your own and it may involve some Googling. <laughs> but I'm definitely giving you the basic ingredients so you can decide what's readily available for you, how you can make that medicine for yourself and what you wanna put in it, what works well for your body. So again, the essential oils are about a three to 5% ratio in your blend. And a thing to remember with essential oils that oftentimes less is more, okay? Um, you could also think about putting rosemary in there. You could do, you could do quite a few different things. Lavender could be nice if you need to relax quite a bit more. Um, I already talked about infusing your oils in dry herbs. You're going to, your carrier oils, pardon me, infusing your carrier oils. You're going to use about one to two ounces of your dried herb per one cup of carrier oil, and that is one to two weighed ounces. This is when a kitchen scale becomes your best friend. <laughs> a kitchen scale can go a long, long way. It's an imperative piece of equipment to have around as you get into more and more of your own medicine making fun. Um, another key ingredient to your salves is going to be beeswax, or you could use an emulsifying wax if you are vegan and you are against using beeswax. I love using beeswax. I love bees. The harm, no foul, either way. Um, but you're going to want to aim for a ratio of about one part beeswax to four parts carrier oil infused in whatever herbs you want, right? So that means if you have one cup of carrier oil infused with your medicinal herbs, you're going to add about a quarter cup of beeswax, which also means that if you've got 100 grams of the oil, you're going to do 25 grams of beeswax. And this is, you know, it's a little give or take. You want to take into consideration things like what time of year is it? Is it cold where you are? Because you're your salve is going to get much harder if it's cold. If it's a hot summer's day and you went lighter on the wax, the emulsifier part, you're going to get some really runny salve in your bag and that's not going to be much fun. So you could maybe go on the higher end during the hotter days of the year. See, these tips you just don't get everywhere. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah. So that's really important. A way you can test if your salve is good to go before you pour the essential oils in, which we'll talk about in a moment, is to do what I call the freezer test. And I take a spoon and I take some of the oil and the beeswax that have been melted together and I put them into the freezer for a few minutes and then I test the consistency of it, which is a really, really great way to go. Oh, good, Danielle. I'm so glad you got some value out of that tip. So let's quickly talk about what it takes to make your salve. So you've already infused your medicinal herbs into your carrier oil, right? And you've got your wax that's going to bind it all together to make it into a salve. And now it's time to cook that stuff down and figure out exactly how to make that salve. So I'm going to show you my ultra fancy version of a double boiling system. First, you need to imagine that I have a giant, not giant, just a red um, Dutch oven because that's what I use. I use this red Dutch oven that my mom gifted me about 15 or 20 years ago. I still use this when I make my salves today and oh, how I wish I had a big 10 gallon wax melting pot instead, but that'll come another day. Um, <laughs> and then I do this fancy, fancy thing. This is a fire brick. 
I got, this is my double boiler guys. I got this um, from a little old mountain cabin I lived in about 11 years ago. <laughs> and it came from the fireplace insert. And I put that at the bottom of my Dutch oven and then I pour some water into the Dutch oven and I get that all nice and hot and I put my beautiful eight cup Pyrex dish on top like so. And then I put in my beeswax and I put in my now medicinally herbal, herbal infused carrier oil, right? I talk about herbs. Is that what I do here? Yeah. Um, and I put that in there, beeswax, carrier oil with the herbs infused only. You don't want to put in your essential oils right away because the heat's going to cause them to evaporate and you're going to lose that medicinal power that they can offer you. So keep that in mind. So I put that in there. I'm very wary to make sure that water is not splashing inside of my pot. You do not want it boiling. You do want it very hot, hot enough to melt the beeswax. And then once the beeswax is melted, that's when you'll actually do that freezer test with the spoon that I talked about. You take a little bit of the spoon, you put it in the freezer, maybe lay it on some foil so you're not leaving like salve all over your freezer. Um, that's a really good way to go. When you find that you're at the right consistency, hold on. If it's too hard, add more oil. If it's too soft, add more beeswax. So you're going to want to make sure that you leave a little extra beeswax, excuse me, or a little extra oil on the side just for good measure or better measure in the future. <laughs> um, and once you find that perfect consistency, not too hard, not too soft, that's when you're going to take that um, Firex dish or if you've got a better double boiler, by all means, use it. I'm not that fancy yet, though. I just want to let you guys know that you can make it with whatever you got. Um, but that is when you're going to take that off of the heat. And then you're going to pour in your 3 to 5% essential oils that you chose. And I don't mean 3 to 5% of each essential oil you're putting in. I mean the whole formulation. So let's say you got like, you're going for 100%. You got 82% of the carrier oil with infused herbs. You got about 12% of the beeswax. And then you've got another 4% or so left for the essential oil blend. And you can choose any of those ones I talked about earlier. Um, really, it's up to you what you've got on hand and what you want to play with. You want to think about that hot, cold factor. You want to think about what you're really trying to do for your body. Um, and then once you get those essential oils stirred in, you stir them nice and gently and you pour them all into whatever containers you want. Leave them open while they dry so there's no crazy heat and moisture kind of issue going on there. Um, and they should dry in like less than an hour. And there you have it. You have made your very own pain salve specific for you and your body. So if you have questions, now is a dynamite time, dynamite time to hit me up with them. Ooh, one thing to remember as you're going about making a pain relieving salve, and if you've got cayenne and you know cooling peppermint essential oil or menthol on your fingers, wash your hands, man, because cayenne in your eyeballs and other sensitive mucosal tissue areas is not fun. <laughs> it's really painful. So wash your hands. That's a big, big, big warning for you. Um, yay, Hillary, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys want to hear more of these kinds of things from me, I'm going to be doing medicine making Mondays, most Mondays at three, unless I'm like my back hurts too much. So I better teach you how to make pain relieving salves. <laughs> um, Lisa, great to see you. Um, yeah. Please let me know what you want to learn about. I know that on Thursday, I'm going to be talking about licorice for gut health. I've also got a workshop not on Facebook and not on Instagram coming up. It's happening. The first one is happening next Tuesday at 4 o'clock. And it's for somebody if you deal with bloating all the time, if you are like groggy and lethargic all the time, if your whole crew of family members thinks you're way too grumpy and can't stand it all the time. If you think you've got crazy food sensitivities and other issues going on, 
join me for that workshop. It's going to be live. You can totally ask me questions as we go through it. And we're going to learn a lot about how your body works, what exactly inflammation is, and how it affects your whole body. And then we're also going to talk about herbs you can use to help ease the inflammation. It's going to be kind of cool. Um, I'm going to make it fun because when you talk about inflammation, I mean, boo, right? But we all deal with it. So you're not alone. You just join me for the workshop. I'm going to make it fun, make it fun because that's what I like to do. Um, yeah. And also soon I'm going to be having a course coming out if you guys are into that. I'm doing a whole six week long course on herbs for optimal gut health. So that's going to be a really good one. We're going to really dive into how your digestive system works. You're going to learn how to stock your own medicine chest with the herbs that you need to help keep you well. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun. And as I say goodbye, I'm going to invite my cute daughter who did a really good job of not interrupting the middle of my video to come in if she wants to say hi and bye. It's snowing outside, so you can wave, Anira. Okay, you can just hug me. The hugs are all mine. Sorry, guys. Thanks for being here. I adore you all so much, and have yourselves a beautiful day. If you like this video, share it with your friends, please, so everybody can be a medicine maker. You know what I mean? So we can make herbalism spread like wildflowers. I swear I'm going to find the end broadcast button here. <laughs> Bye. Snowing. Yay!